All right, so we're gonna go over Pythagorean theorem. Um, so it's a little bit of review of middle school and I know we've touched base on this. So your Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. And so your A and your B are always gonna be the two legs of the triangle. So that's your A and your B, the ones that make the 90 degree angle. And then your C squared will always be the side across the 90 degree angle. So it's directly across from it. So that's your C squared. <clears throat> so it says here the Pythagorean theorem is used to find the side lengths um, of one side of a right triangle when the other two are known. So find the length of the missing side, write your answer in simplest radical form when applicable. So if we look at this first one, these two are going to be our legs of our hypotenuse. So the six and the eight because they make the 90 degree angle. So we're gonna do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So six squared plus eight squared equals, and then we don't know what the hypotenuse is. This is our hypotenuse right here. It is across the 90 degree angle. So we don't know what it is. We're going to just leave it as a C and it's going to be C squared. So the six squared gives you 36. Oh, it's not ready. Plus eight squared gives you 64 equals your C squared which is, we don't know, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so then 36 plus 64 gives you 100. This is equal to C squared. And then we take the square root and the square root of 100 gives you 10. So then that's where we leave it. Okay, so C is equal to 10. And just make sure you box or you highlight your answers. All right, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Number two, so we're gonna do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So remember the two legs that make the right angle are your legs, your a and your b. This is a, this is b. Now this time we don't know what b is, but they do give us c this time. Remember your c is across the 90 degree angle. So our c is equal to six. So when we write this out, it is going to be four squared plus b we don't know, so b squared equals, and we know our c squared is six squared. So four squared gives us 16, plus b squared equals six squared is 36. We subtract the 16 from both sides, and then we end up dividing by, I mean, subtracting, and that gives us 36 minus 16 is 20, to solve for b, we take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 20 gives us 4 times 5 gives us 20. Remember, we can't take the square root and get a whole number, so we have to simplify the radical, just like we did yesterday. So 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. And we know 4, the square root of 4 gives us 2, so b equals 2 and the square root of 5. Okay, remember you can take the square root of four and get a whole number that gave us two, but you can't take the square root of five and get a whole number. So that's why the five stays inside of the square root. Okay, make sure that you box or highlight your answers so that I know which one your answer is. All right, the next one, number three. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And your c is always a side across the 90 degree angle. Okay, so the A we don't know, and then the B is the square root of 33, so A squared plus the square root of 33 squared equals our C squared. In this case, it's 7 squared. Now the A squared we don't know, that's what we're looking for. When you have a square root and a squared, they cancel each other out, and we get 33 equals 7 squared gives us 49. We subtract the 33 on both sides. So 49 minus 33 um, is going to give us uh, 16. And then our last step is to take the square root. So because we can take the square root of 16 and get a whole number, we'll be able to simplify it in its simplest terms. So A is equal to four. Just make sure you box or highlight your answers, please. All right, the next one. <clears throat> so this time they give us a rectangle, and on this rectangle, um, if you notice here, we have a right triangle. So we're going to look at this right triangle here. 
And so we know that our A and our B are both this one, seven. And then if you notice up here, they have this labeled as X, which should be the exact same distance down here, which is also X. So this is my A and my B. And then my C is the side across the 90 degree angle, which is 12. Okay. All right, so we're gonna set up our problem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now in this case, they have our A squared labeled as an X. Our B squared is seven, and our C is going to be 12 squared. All right, so seven squared is going to give us 49. And then we're still solving for X squared. So that should be a plus. Oh, oh I did it again. Plus equals, and then 12 squared is 144. So then we go ahead and subtract the 49 from both sides. This cancels, we get X squared equals 144 minus 49 is 95. And then we take the square root and we get X equals. And so we need to simplify the radical the square root of 95. Okay. And what we can do is we can see which one of our perfect squares will divide into the square root of 95. So your perfect squares, remember, are one, um, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, um, <clears throat> 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, and I think after 49, the numbers will be too big to divide into 95. Um, you check all these to see if any of these numbers will divide into 95, but unfortunately, none of them do, so we cannot simplify this radical, so that would be our final answer. This next one, and we have this trapezoid. Um, they want us to find X, which is a distance from here to here. So before we're able to do anything, we're gonna keep working with what we know. We're using right triangles, and we know that A squared plus B squared has to equal our C squared, which is this side. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and find A. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. So using Pythagorean theorem, I am going to do a squared plus five squared equals six squared. Five squared gives us 25. Six squared gives us 36. We subtract the 25 on both sides. This cancels, we get A squared equals 11. Okay, then we take the square root. Now, when we take the square root of 11, we cannot get a whole number, so we're going to have to leave it as the square root of 11. Okay, there's no simplifying. There's nothing that we can do to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it in in my diagram. Um, we know that A is now the square root of 11. So I'm going to write it in there, the square root of 11. And then because these two sides are the same, because they tell us with the tally mark, I know that these two triangles would be exactly the same. So that means this side right here is also the square root of 11. Okay. And using this information that they give us up here, they tell us from here to here is seven. So that means from here to here is also seven. So to find the entire distance X, you have to add those up. So X equals the square root of 11 plus the seven plus the other square root of 11. So if you have one square root of 11 and you add it to another square root of 11, that's gonna give you seven plus two in the square root of 11. And that would be your final answer. All right, so let's work out a word problem. It says you have a garden in the shape of a of a right triangle with the dimensions shown. So there's our, our triangle garden. Um, it wants us to find the perimeter. So when they want us to find the perimeter, that means that we need to add up all the sides. So we have three sides to a triangle, and we're going to add them all up. So if we notice here, um, we have two of the sides. One is 88 and the other one is 137. 
So then we need to find the third side using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm gonna fill it in here real quick, 88 and 137. 88 and 137. And then we still need to find the third side so we can find the entire perimeter. So right here, I'm gonna do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 88 squared plus 137 squared. Oh crap, sorry. That is not my B. My B, we don't know. This is A, B, and C. So that's why it's important for you to label it before you start writing your Pythagorean theorem so that you don't mix it up like I just did. It equals 137 squared. So then in our calculators, we go ahead and put 88 squared, and that gives us 7,744 plus B squared equals, and then in our calculators, we do 137 squared, and that gives us 18,769. Oh, that's not righty. So then we are going to solve for B, and in order for us to solve for B, we need to move this 7,744 to the other side. Okay, and it cancels out on this side, and we're left with b squared equals 18,769 minus 7,744 is going to give us 11,025. And then our last step to solve for b is to take the square root. But what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So we take the square root of 11,025 and our B is equal to 105. So that means this missing side is 105 and our units are inches. So right here, I can finish off my problem to find the perimeter 105. So we're gonna put in our calculators, 88 plus 137 plus 105 and that is going to give us a perimeter of 330 inches. So then from there, we're gonna plan a post every 15 inches around the garden's perimeter. How many posts do we need? So if we look here, um, we would put, say we put a post there in the corner and then we count 15 inches and we add another one and another 15 inches and we keep adding every 15 inches and they wanna know how many posts we're going to need. So we take the perimeter, which is 330. And then we are going to divide it by 15 inches. Okay, cause that's how many um, inches it's gonna be between every single post. So divide it by 15 and this gives us a total of 22. So that means that we are going to plant a total of 22 posts. So then we look at the next part. It says you plan to attach fencing to the post to enclose a garden. If each post cons if each post costs $1.25, so the post costs $1.25, and each foot of fencing costs 70 cents. How much will it cost to enclose a garden? So we're looking for a total cost. Um, we know that the post costs a dollar twenty-five, and we're gonna have to plant twenty-two of them. Okay. Plus the fence is going to cost us seventy cents, so 0 0.70 times the amount of fencing that we need. Now our fencing is sold in square feet. So in this case, or not square feet, just regular feet. In this case, when we found our perimeter, it gave it to us in inches. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to feet real quick. So here we're gonna do 330 times, that's in inches. And we're gonna multiply it times one foot is exactly the same as 12 inches. So we make our conversion, our inches cancel each other out. And then we multiply 330 times one, and then we are going to divide that by 12. And that gives us 27.5 feet. 
So that's how much fencing we're gonna need is 27.5 feet to go around our entire garden. So 27.5 feet. All right, so when we multiply $1.25 times 22, that means it's gonna cost us $27.50 for the post. And then when we multiply 0.70 times 27.5, that means that we are going to need um, $19.25 to cover or to use the fence, to produce a fence. So then when we go ahead and calculate the total, that is going to give us $46.75. Okay, Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples is any set of three positive integers, A, B, and C, such that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for example, three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple because when we do three squared plus four squared, the three and the four, nine plus 16, it's gonna give us five squared. Five squared is 25. So these whole numbers come out perfectly. Um, so these are our common Pythagorean triples. If you look here, I'm only gonna do one more example for you on how it works out perfectly. But we know five squared is 25 plus our B squared, 12 squared is 144. It should equal 13 squared, which is 169. So when we check this, 25 plus 44 does give you 169. So these special cases are called Pythagorean triples, okay? So if we look here, um, the first one says, find the length of the missing side. So here they want us to find the question mark. We notice that 15 and 17 are two of the other numbers. So we are using this Pythagorean triple here, eight, 15, 17. So that means our missing side is eight. We look at the next Pythagorean triple. So if we look at these numbers, we have five, 13, and question mark. So this is a Pythagorean triple we're gonna use, five, 12, 13. So the missing side is 12. And the last one, here we have 24, seven, and question mark. So 24 and seven is your seven, 24, 25 triple. So that means our question mark is equal to 25. This does not look like a 12, sorry about that. 12. All right. <clears throat> now the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So you can use a Pythagorean theorem to figure out if you have a right triangle and that happens if you have um, an equal, if C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. You will have an obtuse triangle if your C squared is greater than your A squared plus your B squared. And then you will have an acute triangle if your C squared is less than your A squared plus B squared. So it says determine if a triangle can be formed. So first we need to check to see do these sides make a triangle. So if you remember from one of the previous lessons that these two legs need to be longer than the third leg because if it's too long then these two legs are going to be too short. Okay so we're going to do is seven plus eight greater than nine. Yes, it is. Seven plus eight gives you 15. It's greater than nine. So yes, we do have a triangle. So I'm going to do that real quick for all of them. Um, on this one, we have the two shorter legs, 24 plus 45. Is that greater than 51? Okay. Yes, that is greater than 51. So we have a triangle here. This next one, four plus 10, is that greater than 13? It's barely, 14 is greater than 13, so yes, we do have a triangle. And then the last one, five plus four, is that greater than 12? Unfortunately, it's not, so this is not a triangle, okay? So now that we've verified which ones are triangles and which ones are not triangles, now we can say what kind of triangle this is. Is it gonna be a right triangle, an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle? So the way that we check that is we look for the biggest side, in this case, my biggest side is nine, and we're gonna do nine squared. We don't know what sign is gonna come out in between. It's either gonna be an equal to, a less than, or a greater than. And then we're going to do seven squared plus eight squared. So we know nine squared is 81. Oh, here we go again. 
Someone's on our right. All right, so then in our calculators, we punch in seven squared plus eight squared. And that gives us 113. One, one, three. There it goes. All right, so 81 is less than 113. So that means that this is an acute triangle. If you look here, this says an acute triangle. So I'm going to write here, acute triangle. All right, let's check the next one, number 10. So we're going to do A squared plus B squared, or C squared, sorry. We start with the bigger number, which is 51. 51 squared. We're going to see what sign goes in the middle. And then we have 24 squared and plus 45 squared. So when we do 51 squared, that gives us... 2,601, and we sign in between 24 squared plus 45 squared also gives us 2,601. So because this comes out equal, whenever it comes out equal, this is a right triangle. And the last one, here we have... 13, 4, and 10. So we're going to do the biggest number is 13. So 13 squared. Is this greater than, less than, or equal to 4 squared plus 10 squared? All right, so 13 squared is 169. And then we don't know what this sign is. 4 squared plus 100 squared is, I mean, 10 squared is 116. And so that means 169 is greater than 116. So if we look at our little table up here, if it is greater than, then that means you have an obtuse triangle. So right here, I'm going to write obtuse triangle. All right, so you guys have your assignment. I only want you guys to do the even numbers. The odd numbers will be extra credit. And, um, you probably won't finish right now in class, but you'll go ahead and take it for homework, whatever you don't finish. And then I will be checking your notes and your assignment on Monday. We'll see you. Have a good weekend.